Today we're going to take a look at a logic game, and this comes from the analytical reasoning section of an actual LSAT exam. As we go through this game, we're going to show you how to set up a diagram that represents all of the elements or rules that you're going to find in the game. And then we'll take that diagram and use it to answer each of the questions associated with this logic game. If you're looking for a downloadable or printable copy of this game because you want to follow along, you can find that at alpha-score.com and just go to the free trial section. So let's go ahead and take a look at the game now. So here's our LSAT logic game setup. Let's take a quick read through and then we can go on and set up a diagram. A company employee generates a series of five digit product codes in accordance with the following rules. The codes use the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 and no others. Each digit occurs exactly once in any code. The second digit has a value exactly twice that of the first digit. The value of the third digit is less than the value of the fifth digit. So you see in your game there, you've got a little introductory paragraph, and that just tells you a little story about what's going on in the game and helps you set up the basics of your diagram. And that's going to be followed by a set of rules. And this is going to be the same for all of your LSAT logic games. So you've got your introductory paragraph followed by a few rules. The key here is you want to take this introductory paragraph and these rules and summarize them into a very succinct, organized diagram that you can use to apply to your questions and answer your questions. And you want to make sure that you take all of the information out of that game and put it into your diagram. You do not want to have to come back and reread any of this. You want to go through it once, take the information, put it into the diagram, and never look back again. If you ever find yourself having to look back at what's going on in that paragraph and those rules, it means you didn't do a good enough job putting it into your diagram or you didn't put it into your diagram in a way that you understand. So let's go through and do that right now. We'll follow through all elements of our logic game and we'll translate it into a simple diagram that we can use to answer our questions. So let's take a look at this logic game. Our introductory paragraph starts off by telling us that a company employee generates a series of five digit product codes in accordance with the following rules. So we've got some rules that are going to be coming in just a moment, but right now our paragraph or our introductory paragraph is telling us we've got five digits that are going into each code and we're going to be generating these codes. Well, this is telling us that we're going to have to place our entities or our digits into order from first through to fifth. So like all of your logic games, you want to put up placeholders and placeholders are just going to be a simple line that's going to represent where you're going to put your entities. And our entities in this case are our digits. Now this game is giving us digits and we're placing them in order from first to fifth. So we know it's a basic ordering game. And this just means that you're putting things in an order. You're putting your entities in a simple order uh, from one to five or one to six or one to 10 or whatever it is, depending on the number of entities. So in this case, we've got five entities that are gonna be going into order. So we're just gonna draw five placeholders or five lines to hold your entities. So let's put those lines out. Then the next step is to move on to our rules. Our first rule really gives us our list of entities. And this tells us the codes use the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and no others. So no others just means we're only using 0 through 4. There's not gonna be anything else jumping in there. So as with all of your logic games, you want to write down your list of entities. Now in this case, it's quite simple. We're told 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we put down 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now in other logic games, you might be given a list of names or more complicated names for your entities. And you're just going to grab the first letter from those entities and put that down as your list of entities. So we've got our basic, basic diagram set up and our list of entities. Now we're going on to the rest of our rules. Our next rule tells us each digit occurs exactly once in any code. Now you don't really need to add this to your diagram, but I like you to have everything that was said here included in your diagram. So let's just write in once each. And this just means that each of these entities is only gonna occur once. So you can't use the number one twice, you can only use it once. And that goes for all your entities. So you can write in once each, or you can just remember, I'm only allowed to use each of these once. Our next rule tells us, the second digit has a value exactly twice that of the first digit. So with any of these rules that you maybe haven't seen before, I want you to think about how is this going to look in my diagram? If I were to plug something into my diagram, 
how would this work? And that'll help you in putting the rules quite simply into your diagram. So in this, if we put something into the first spot in our diagram, whatever goes into the second is gonna have to be exactly two times that. So why not just put times two between the first and the second spot? So we'll put the first spot times two equals our second spot. Now I like to put these notations just underneath your lines and keep everything above your lines clear unless you know exactly what's going in there. The reason for this is when you go to fill in your diagram, it's all nice and clear along the top and you're not gonna get confused if you're being a bit messy as to what's filled in and what's not. Now if you're told something specific like number four is in your second spot, go ahead and plug that right in on top of the lines because you know it's gonna be there and it's gonna stay there. But for all the rest of the stuff, try and keep it underneath the lines or underneath your placeholders. So let's take a look at our final rule. This tells us the value of the third digit is less than the value of the fifth digit. So our third place is less than our fifth place. So we're going to use our greater than and equal or greater than and less than signs. So if we go under our third spot, we're going to say less than fifth. And whatever we put here has to be less than whatever's in our fifth spot. And accordingly, if we go over to our fifth spot, we can put in greater than third, meaning whatever we put in over here in the fifth spot has to be greater than what's in our third spot. Now be careful, when you're using your greater than or less than symbols, make sure you know what they mean. I know this is simple, but we find a lot of students messing up on this, putting down one symbol and not being sure whether that means greater than or less than or messing it up after the fact when they go to plug something in. So take a few moments now, really familiarize yourself with these symbols and make sure you know exactly which one means greater than and which one, which one means less than. So in this case, we've got less than fifth in the thir third spot and greater than third in the fifth sp spot. So that represents all of the rules and our basic setup for this game. So we've got our complete diagram and we're ready to go on and take a look at our questions. So before we go on to our questions, there's a couple of techniques that you can use that are a bit more advanced, but they really will help you in the more difficult logic games. Now, this game isn't particularly difficult. You don't really need these techniques here, but if you start to use them here, when you get to the more difficult logic games, they're gonna become a lot easier. So the two techniques we're talking about are first, combining rules, and second, using a limited number of options or analyzing your limited options. So with the combining rules technique, uh, there's not really a place for it here, but the way you can tell if there's a place for combining rules is you look through your rules and you see if any of them share a common element. So if rule number one and rule number two both refer to digit number three, say, you've got a common element, you can probably combine those rules. And we'll show you how to do that in some of our other videos. There is no common rules here, so we can't combine our common elements between rules here, so we can't combine any of our rules here. But let's take a look at our second technique, and we can use that one in this game. Our second technique is called analyzing for limited options. And in doing that, you want to go through and look at your rules and find the rule that is the most restrictive or gives you the least amount of options as to where you can put things in a game. So these are often rules that involve lots of entities or lots of different places in the diagram. In this case, if we look at our first rule here that's telling us that the first spot and the second spot have a relationship of one to two, meaning that our second spot is exactly two times the first spot, this is a very limiting option. If you try and plug in each of your different digits into the first and second spot, there's only two combinations that are gonna work here. If we try and put zero in our first spot, well, zero times two is zero, we can't use zero twice. Remember, you can only use your entities once each in this game. So zero won't work in the first spot. If we try and put one in the first spot times two, we can put two in our second spot. That's our first option. If we put two in our first spot times two is four, we can put four in our second spot. That's our second option. No other options will work. Let's just try that. If we put three in our first spot, three times two is six, we don't have a six. And the same goes for number four. We put four first, four times two is eight, we don't have an eight. So three or four aren't gonna work in our first spot. So our only options here are that we put in the first and second spot, one and two, or two and four. And you can represent this in your diagram by either drawing two separate diagrams or just adding it into one diagram. If you wanna do two separate diagrams, you can do one that says one, two, in the first and second spot, and another one that says 
two, four in the first and second spot. If you want to keep it all in one diagram, you go into your first spot and you put one slash two, meaning one or two, and the same in your second spot, two slash four, meaning two or four in your second spot. And this makes it a lot easier when you go on to your questions because now you have a much more restricted, a much more limited diagram and it's gonna be a lot easier to plug in information because there's just less places to put things. So you don't have to worry anymore about what's going first or second. You're really just plugging things into the third, fourth and fifth spots, making things a lot easier. So now we're ready to go on and take a look at our questions for this game. For the rest of the videos in this series, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or go to alpha-score.com. You can find more videos and a whole lot more to help you in your LSAT preparation in our free trial section.